Hi guys and welcome to another OPN tutorial. Today we're getting straight into the video and the reason for that is I had a faulty memory card so I've lost a lot of footage from this tutorial so I do apologise that it's not going to be as long as some of my other tutorials but hopefully you'll pick up some tips and tricks along the way. First of all I'd like to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me the miniature out for review. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to their web store and every time you purchase something from that link it greatly helps my YouTube channel. Okay here you can see that I'm priming the miniature using Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer Grey and it's very important to note that you need to be very well ventilated if you're using this primer. And also, a thing to note, uh, it's very harmful uh, to uh, lesser quality airbrushes. What I mean by that is you need to have an airbrush with a PTFE solvent proof seal, otherwise the uh, hot liquid, which is the Alclad 2 lacquer primer, will damage your airbrush. Okay, so here you can see that I'm priming at about 20 psi, at about 4 or 5 inches away, and I'm just getting a very fine coat on the model. The primer layer, which is grey, has also acted as our base layer and we're highlighting from there on. I'm using Vallejo Game Air Dead White here to start highlighting the panels. I'm leaving all of the grey behind in all of the recess areas and I'm mainly concentrating towards the centre of each panel on the armour plates of the Riptide. Now we're going to start picking out areas of interest using Vallejo Model Air Medium Gunship Grey. Here's what the miniature looks like turning around on the turntable 
and showing you all of the gray accents that we've added to the miniature just to add that little bit of various variety I should say to the miniature now we're picking out all of the tiny little screw type icons on the miniature using games workshops corn red after applying all of the corn red to all of those screw designs that are dotted around the whole of the miniature i then wash it with games workshops druchy violet after the druchy violet thoroughly dries i then come in and start highlighting with games workshops mephist on red All of the metallics on the Riptide are going to be painted with Vallejo Metal Colour Gunmetal Grey. I have to add how awesome I think the Metal Colour range is from Vallejo. The spray out of the airbrush fantastic but on top of that they also hand brush paint beautifully as well. Here you can see me washing all of the red areas with Druchy Violet. And here's what the miniature looks like after all the red accent parts to the miniature have been painted. Now we're going to gloss varnish the Riptide. This is going to do a few things. First and foremost it's going to make sure that the paintwork is thoroughly protected. Secondly it's going to add a high sheen finish to the miniature that's going to add our pin wash flow nice and smoothly into all of those nooks and crannies and recesses of the miniature. Here I'm using AK Interactive's Rust Streaks. Now the reason I'm using an enamel based wash instead of an acrylic wash is you have a very uh, cool time period where you can actually remove stains from 
the Riptoid or any other miniature that you're working on with some odorless uh, turpentine or regular turpentine for that matter uh, I'm using AK Interactive's odorless thinner uh, but basically you add the wash uh, like so I've thinned it down a little with some odorless uh, thinner and once it's dried after about 10 or 15 minutes you come back in with some odorless thinner and then you're able to move any unnecessary uh, stains or marks on the miniature which you just can't do with acrylic washes Again, here you can see how well the wash flows onto the miniature. After allowing uh, the pin wash to thoroughly dry and remove any excess stains that we didn't want, it's then important to come in with a satin varnish to get rid of that horrid looking high gloss sheen. Here you can see that I'm adding some chips to the miniature using Games Workshop's Rhinox Hide. I use a very fine tip brush here, um, I believe it's a triple naught, and I'm just going around all the extreme edges of the miniature where I think chips would naturally occur. Here I'm adding sponge chips to the miniature and I remove most of the paint from the sponge on some paper towel and then we very very lightly dab the sponge onto the miniature just to get some really nice looking organic chips. This is the last of the footage I've got. I actually came back in with uh, some Vallejo Game Air Dead White and highlighted some of the rivets and some of the panel details with the white to make it really pop but unfortunately I haven't got that footage so I hope you like this quick tutorial guys and I hope you picked up a few little tips and tricks I want to thank Goblin Gaming once again for the uh, Riptide that was sent for review thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one